Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming to our LaxCon here in Hong Kong for 2021. We're so excited to have this, and it's been a long time in the making, and we're excited to keep presenting. I'm CJ. I'm the women's coach here in Hong Kong, and this is Chad, the men's coach. And we're just going to be talking to you guys a little bit about um, some different uh, coaching philosophies that we have and some different key points that we like to keep in the back of our brains. And then we're also going to talk to you about uh, some of our feelings with what it's like to coach here at Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, we can start off, uh, Jen, why don't you start with uh, some of the things that you've learned over the years? Okay, yeah. So I think like when I first started coaching, um, one of the big things that stuck with me was a philosophy that a, you know, a coach had I had heard in a talk of some sort, and it was just kind of reminding us why we are coaching. And it's, it's what, like what the purpose of a coach is. And I think the big thing there is that bottom line that players who have a love of a sport and want to represent a community in some way, they need a leader, they need somebody to help them grow. And I think that that's a big thing for me was to kind of remember that it's not like you and I had talked about it earlier, it's not necessarily results focused, but more along the lines of being focused on the overall purpose of why we're coaching. And that's just being there for the players. Mm, so you're trying to develop and foster that that love of the sport within the within the athlete. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, you want to make sure that you just kind of keep it back in your brain, like, oh, I'm here because they want to learn lacrosse. Yeah, that's great. I love that. What else do you have? I think that um, some of the big things for me too would be uh, my players always laugh at me, and I know that they're going to kind of roll their eyes when they're listening to this right now, but fundamentals are key. You know, I feel like being involved in lacrosse for so many years now, I think that you see the game change, the rules change, it evolves, it kind of, you know, gets fancier and everybody gets better at doing it. And I think that every now and then coaches have to go back to doing some sort of the, like the fundamentals and just kind of remembering like, okay, yeah, that's great. But while you were learning those behind the backs and Twizzlers, you kind of forgot that you had to give when you catch and not wrap cradle and not think about the next step, but also make sure you secure that pass and, you know, making sure our stats on catching and throwing are high percentage and we're getting our butt down on ground balls and yeah. Kind of going from that. I, I don't think I, I've met a player who loved fundamentals. Like, <laughs> oh, yay, let's go do fundamentals. You know, putting the fun in fundamentals. That's a, yeah, that's a misnomer, that really. <laughs> it's really a misnomer. But I, I agree with you 100%. I think we've, we've got we've to make sure that we do get back to that every once in a while. Make sure that they're, they're fundamentally strong. Yeah, what about that's you? That's great stuff. Um, I mean, I've got a couple things that I've that I've over the years have learned from different coaches that I've worked with. And I, I think one of the biggest things was is not to overcoach. Overcoaching is, is almost like um, if a player isn't really strong with fundamentals. And, and I think you actually mentioned this earlier, 98% of the time you make that pass, you make that catch. That's when you know that you're not really thinking about it, yeah. right? You're not really thinking about that pass or catch. You know that it's, it's that stick is just part of your hands. And, and so I think if, if you don't get the players to that point where they can do those things, those fundamental things without thinking about them, if you try to give them more complex maneuvers, then they spend so much time thinking about, okay, where should I go next? What should I be doing? Where should my stick be? Where should my feet be? And then they miss the pass, right? Yeah. Or, or, or they, they can't catch the ball. That's the problem with overcoaching. We really have to coach to the level of the fundamental players that we have. I think that was a, a really uh, a big thing that one of the coaches uh, gave me years and years ago. And I've really tried to always keep that, you know, with me whenever I'm trying to make a plan for whatever team, whatever, you know, because it's different. Every time you go somewhere, you've got a different team and a different group of players, yeah. different combinations, and a different group of personalities. Yeah, I've heard you say it before. I really like yeah. that because it kind of hits home to even the fundamentals aspect. It really, yeah, it really comes back to the same point that you were making about having to circle back to the fundamentals. Yes. Uh, I think it's the same thing. So um, the other thing, something that you mentioned too, is, is about, about trying to foster that love of the game. To me, um, I was presented with athlete-centered versus game-centered. And so game-centered is when you try to coach a group of athletes simply to win the game. And you don't think about developing each athlete individually. 
And when we talk about developing the athlete individually, I'm not just specifically talking about the athlete as a lacrosse player, but you know, as a person, as a teammate, um, as, as even as a subordinate, you know, because they have their, at some point they're gonna have a job. So they've got to think about, right? You know, you, you've got to think about how your relationship works with your with your your boss as well. So when we talk about developing the athlete, we're talking about developing each athlete in the group, not just our best athletes making plays to set up that they get the shot or or they get the opportunity to score, because that would be game centered. I'm talking about really fostering the entire athlete, which is, again, I think it really plays into that same thing. The same point that you made about fostering that love. If you develop all those athletes individually, they all maintain that love. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a study that was done in North America, uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. And the number one reason for attrition or, or the players leaving the sport was it stopped being fun. Yes. And, and a lot of that is because coaches, some coaches can be out there game centered coaching and those bottom end athletes aren't being developed. They lose that, that passion for the game. I feel like us as coaches too, I, I find that like sometimes we do become like so game centered and we lose our own like selves. And then like every so often we have to remind ourselves like be athlete centered. So I feel like yeah. constantly in every program I've been in, it's like a battle for both. It's like, you want to make sure that you're progressing the team and focused on the overall, but also going back and being like, it's more than that. Yeah, and it, it's it's something interesting to, uh, that I like to do at the end of every season. I make a lot of notes throughout the season on what's happened, what worked well, what didn't work well, and almost do like a little debrief with myself on what do I think I did well and what do I think I didn't do well. And that's a lot of the time where I go back and I try to look at, did it, was I really athlete-centered here or was I really getting too focused on yeah. game-centered? And, and so you really got to check yourself as a coach regularly. I think it's good to go back and look at what you've done. Yeah, and I think that kind of ties into my third point, which would be uh, kind of remembering to always grow. Like yeah. you're talking about the growth of all the athletes and stuff like that, but I feel that, you know, monitoring their growth and their, you know, and, and monitoring it, not just in like playing, but in their overall lives, et cetera, is important, but it's also remembering us, to like us as coaches, we have to grow. You know, you and I probably co started coaching so long ago and the game was so different back then that if we didn't grow, we would not be still coaching. Like we would have been mm -hmm. like forced out so long ago because we didn't evolve with the game. Like the game's evolving, it's always growing. We see the new sixes and the, maybe the new women's box. And if we don't stay on top of that and, you know, not even just with our education, um, but also just in terms of ourselves and check ourselves every so often. I think mm -hmm. that that's like one thing that I'd like to make sure that coaches remember is that, you know, yeah, you may, you may know it now and you may be great, but don't be afraid to listen to other coaches or take advice from the players or take advice from, you know, somebody who may not know anything about lacrosse, but might be a fantastic leader. And I think that that's really helped me, especially in these last few years, like kind of like develop a little bit more as a leader. Yeah, it's funny. We just stole my third point, by the oh, way. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because essentially my third point is to be flexible. Yeah. Which is essentially what you're what you're saying is that you never know where a great idea is going to come from. Yes. So if a player approaches you and says, Hey, have you ever have we ever tried this? Should we try this? Should we do this? I saw this somewhere. Always, always listen to that and always be open because sometimes you you really have no idea where the, the next great idea is coming from. And yeah. so if you're closed down and thinking, well, this is the way it's always been done. Um, the unfortunate part is you've stopped growing, yeah. right? And when you stop growing, you're just not gonna be able to keep up with the times because things Correct. just happen faster. Um, uh, interesting, a funny little story. We're talking about sticks and, and the players pick up my stick and they can't throw the ball with it at all. Um, <laughs> not a wooden one, right? Yeah, not the woody one. I mean, I have the woody here, but I haven't even taken the woody to practice. But the, my stick is is set up completely different because of the way I grew up with a wooden stick. Yes. And all leather stringing. Of course. And so we wanted to have a, a deeper pocket, but we also had wanted to have that that ball swing around in the pocket. And the guys nowadays want a really narrow channel. They don't want the ball to move at all. They want it solidified in their stick. And we, as a, 
I wanted to feel the ball moving inside my stick so I knew where the ball was. Yeah. So that development of that process, if I was, if I was stuck and I was saying to, um, saying to all my athletes, no, 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 you can't string your sticks that way. It doesn't work that way, right? They would be so frustrated because they wouldn't be able to play with the way I string my stick. Okay. Right. And that's partially, not partially, it's 100% because I've gone from a wooden stick with all leather to then eventually having nylon in the wooden stick and then having a plastic head and then having yeah. offset head with a, now an aluminum shaft, then going to a titanium shaft where you can feel the ball because the stick is so much lighter than the old wooden. Right. So things have just drastically changed in equipment that if I was stuck in my ways, it, it just wouldn't work for the players. And the athletes nowadays yeah so so i think i think being flexible really plays into exactly what you said about the coaches and 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 both coaches being uh willing to grow and yeah. you know and, and you know we, we had this conversation a little bit earlier as well that to grow sometimes it's uncomfortable yes very uncomfortable <laughs> right yeah and so i think sometimes players don't get that right players don't always like to be uncomfortable they like to be comfortable and they think that that's where they should be. And so as coaches, sometimes we have to push our players to be uncomfortable so that they will actually grow. Yeah. That's absolutely <laughs> hit the nail on the head that one. So what do you find uh, different then about, about coaching in Hong Kong or what is it about Hong Kong that you noticed when you got here versus North America? I, I feel like uh, it kind of ties into like everything we were talking about, like, in Hong Kong, when I came here, uh, the players, you know, a little bit older, but it was such a good lacrosse culture here that it was funny because I feel like I'm so used to programs that, you know, need the coach to be like, yeah, let's get this. We love this sport. Let's really like, you know, you're trying to get these, you know, kids and young adults, like really fired up about something that you, you know, is your full-time job. Whereas here, I didn't need to do that. Like I had, you know, athletes who were running from one practice with me and then coming in and throwing on their cleats to go be a practice player or to go be a player at the practice that I was coaching next. And I had players that were running from one league game and switching their uniform to a striped shirt and going to officiate. So I feel like as a lacrosse coach, you, you sit there and you measure the success by wins and losses, et cetera, but it's also by like who stays involved. I think mm -hmm. you had mentioned retention earlier yeah. and it's so true. Like if, if you can retain players that still want to play, they still like are loving the sport and they still are, you know, want to be involved somehow, even after long after they retired, then you've done a good job here. Yeah. And since that culture was already built here, it was kind of just trying to carve out my place as this new coach who kind of came in and try to figure out like, okay, how do I get these, these women to all work together and to accomplish everyone's overall goal? Like individually is huge. And, but like as a team as well, and trying to get that to kind of go from there. Yeah. That's it's uh, I mean, it plays back into your first point about fostering that love of the game and they exactly. already they already have that love so then you just get to support it which is actually a really good position for a coach yeah. to be in right to have that it's much easier that must I was just like wait what am i doing yeah. okay i i mean i know obviously i noticed that with the men as well when i got here i was i was surprised by a couple of things the passion for the sport yeah. and the skill level yeah. i was i was surprised at the skill level of some of the players that are here because I just didn't expect it to have in such a short, I think 1993, when they developed the first age, uh, Hong Kong Lacrosse Association in really such a growth, short growth period compared to the United States yeah, and Canada. States, yeah. the, the skill level is is up there very, very high. Yep. Um, and one of the things I did notice though is because the players here start so much later. They do like compared to North America and kids are starting, you know, I mean, there are some that four or five years old, but most are nine, 10, 11 in that area where they start playing here, they don't start till they're 17, 18, 19. Yep. And, and I find that sometimes they, they skip the fundamentals, right. And they want to rush that process because I'm trying to get to a game or like to get, be able to compete in a game. That's like in a year's time. Exactly. So they, they they see all the internet, right. They get on, they see highlight videos, That's true. right. And they watch the highlight videos and then they're out there practicing what they saw in the highlight videos which is absolutely fantastic. I love that because one reason, their stick is in their hand, Yeah. right? The more they have their stick in their hand, the better they're gonna get. The exactly. So now it's uh, what I found that I really had to go to your second point 
And your second point being the fundamentals was that I had to go back and really support the fundamentals because some of them didn't have the fundamentals down to that 98% that we talked yeah. about, right? So that for me was the, the, the biggest thing when I came in, I thought coaching, if I could really get them to focus more on the fundamentals than those things that they saw on the internet, right? When they saw highlight videos, then they would be able to go out and Excuse do that more. Me. Yeah. Uh, it goes back to when I, when I, when I'm, I'm coaching little kids, I always show them little tricks I can do with a stick. And I say, try also, that. I've seen your tricks. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> and, but I do that and I say, okay, no, you try, you try. Because that fosters a couple of things. Their, their, their wonderment, their amazement yes. of the sport, like what you, what I could do. And then it also gets them out there practicing that because now, They've got your stick in their hand yep. and that's important because the more you have your stick in your hand the more it becomes part of your hands right so for me i think um coming to hong kong and seeing the skill level being as high it is as i and the desire being as high as it was like the love of the sport the dedication the commitment uh, like it was so much higher than i expected it to be um and so then it was it, it made something so much easier for me Right. And I think there was a really good groundwork laid by the former coach that was here for me. So I was, oh, yeah, you know, I, mean, I was, yeah, we were, we, I think we were lucky. We came, came into a really good situation where we had a great group of players. Yeah. Um, and, and that's obviously growing where our numbers are growing, which is great. Uh, but really good foundation put in by the former coaching staffs here. So uh, I'm really, I'm really happy. The situation I think is great. It sounds like you came in the same situation that I did with a really solid base and, and, a, yeah. and a great group of athletes. Very tight knit team, very team oriented. Yeah. That's, got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyways, that, that, that's really what, uh, for me, I think those, those three points that I made, I think you made some very good points. And I guess it turns out that we almost made the same points in different ways. Yeah. I feel like we just kind of brought it all together and kind of just spun out off of each other. But I think it just shows that like, all coaches have the same key points in mind. But I think the important thing that you and I constantly said was always mentally checking back in it. I think yeah. you talked about giving yourself like a breakdown after an event or, you know, after a season and just kind of referencing back and saying like, did I stay true to my core? Yeah. And, you know, and what we're both talking about is, you know, being okay to, you know, change your core a little bit. Yes. I think, you know, yes. it's okay to kind of change it up and, you know, with, with different teams, different coaches, different, you know, principles, it's always going to be, you know, a, an air in a situation where we have to be flexible, like you said, and a learning process and a learning process for sure. Le learning for life really yes. is that what it is. So, oh, well, listen, thank you very much. First yeah, of all, for uh, having me, yeah. <laughs> for having me. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm really excited that we, that we're getting an opportunity to do this little chat. Um, I mean, obviously we, our desks are right beside each other, so we talk all the time, um, but- I don't think we've ever really laid out like- I don't think so either. Everything we like, we're like, you know, hey, this is what I stand for this week. I don't even think I've done this with my players. I probably need to. Well, hopefully you guys are watching. <laughs> but, right? <laughs> now you gotta send the link out to everybody. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, thanks everybody for, for tuning in and watching. We really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for a lot more uh, great content that we've got uh, coming up the rest of the week. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone, bye. Bye.